Today I'm taking a look at the Think Car Think Scan 662. Okay, so we got our quick start guide. It says it has a 6.2 inch screen that is 1024 by 600 and it works at 1.2 amps. And that does have a nice large display on it. It's got a kind of rubbery plastic case on the outside. We've got our power button, we got our serial port, we got our navigation buttons. On the side, we got a spot for our USB C charging port and a micro SD card slot. We also have our cable, got a serial port on one side, and we got our OBD2 port on the other side. And we got our charging cable that has USB A to USB C. Okay, so that is touch screen. You can adjust the brightness. So if we're working outdoors, we don't have to worry about seeing it. It does come with 86% battery charge. That is excellent. I'm going to give it a full charge. It is typically best to charge these guys up. And we can connect to Wi-Fi, which is excellent. So if we ever need to upgrade this thing, we can do that all with this tool. We don't have to go and take it to our computer, download to our computer, and then try to find a way to connect this to our computer. Everything will be done right here with this tool. And upgrade. And we can see we have 53 that we can upgrade, which is excellent. So that means that they are actually keeping up on the software for this thing. So as new updates come out for new cars, this will automatically take care of that. So I'm going to let that finish and we will come back to it. Okay, so we are updated. I do like having a back button right there, like a physical button that I can touch because it's not always obvious how I can go back. Right here will be this button right there to go back. But just having a clear, obvious button is always handy. So in the maintenance tab, we have ABS bleeding, airbag reset, battery matching, brake pad reset, DPF regeneration, electronic throttle adaptation, gearbox learning, anti-theft key matching, injector coating, oil reset, steering angle reset, and TPMS reset. So those are all the major functions that this one can do. So we also got our basic settings. We can actually adjust this, make this metric, clear the data, restore factory reset. We can actually cast the screen. So if we want to see this on a larger display, we can do that. That'd be great for like training purposes. We have online service. We have our user manual for it. So that's nice. It's actually built right in. Fault code library. So that way, if we have a PO136, something like that, we can see that as an O2 sensor. That is circuit bank one, sensor two. Very handy having that here. So somebody has a PO136, but they don't know what it means, we can actually just look that up on this tool. And gadgets, and remote assistance, and it looks like this button right here will give you the same menu, but just in kind of like a smaller format. So pretty cool. Let's go ahead and hook this up to our car. So let's do auto search. So this is going to identify what the vehicle is. Very important if you're going to be working for other people, especially, you know, most people don't know what year their car is, it seems like anyway. But with this, it automatically picks up the VIN. It's going to pick up all the information for it. We don't even have to worry about it. So if you're working on somebody else's car, they don't know. Not a problem. This guy can handle that. And auto search. Set the ignition to on. It is already on. Yep, it picked up everything correct. We hit yes. And let's do a health report. So right now, it's just checking all the modules. It looks like we have four systems found and no problems. Let's go back. Go system scan, check the powertrain control module, and read data stream. Okay, so now we've got everything in the powertrain control module that we can check. So let's turn on the accelerator pedal position and brake pedal position. So right now it says we are at 16%. If I apply the gas, we can see the value changes. If I apply the brake, that goes from false to true. So very nice. So in the event that you're working on one of those pedals and you need to find out if the sensor itself is actually causing the problem, this can help you diagnose that without even having to touch that sensor. Very handy having all of that right here. So yeah, if you're into doing DIY stuff, that is going to be an excellent option.